Good evening once again, and um, welcome to the Literary Hour. I'm your host, Jackie Sae, and of course, my co-host is Dr. Kim Moses Nangwe. Uh, today, we will be continuing. Hi, Prof Nangwe. <laughs> Yes, and today, today we will be continuing um, the subject of poetry and um, uh, we will discuss conflict um, and healing today. Um, and feel free to send your questions. As we said, feel free to post your poems if you want us to discuss it. But we will be discussing um, poetry as an instrument of healing, poetry as an instrument of lamentation, exhortation. As we said uh, last week, we're continuing the conversation. So Prof, we're here again and yeah. we have people joining us and welcome and yeah. let's get this started. I know, <laughs> yeah, it's good to be around again. Yeah, so so Prof, when I, when I, um, when we were discussing before, be, uh, a few days ago about um, poetry and healing, what we, we said that um, we're going to focus on poetry and the elements in poetry of catharsis, um, therapy, how it, it's a therapeutic agent when, when you put words down. But when I was going through some of the, the poems, I also found out that it's, the conflict is not just civil, it's not just within the country. Poetry can also be a healing agent for um, conflicts within yourself, for your identity. Um, putting words into a poem about how you feel, uh, uh, where you belong, all of those things also are, are, are um, elements of conflict, don't you think? Yes, one has to understand that conflict as such has to do with discordance, dissonance, uh, you know, conflict has to do with a rupture in harmony. Yes. If there is a rupture in harmony, then of course you have conflict. So then you are right by saying that uh, when we talk about conflict, we are talking about intrapersonal conflict, conflict within yourself, and then we talk about interpersonal conflict all right but if we look at a broad context we talk about um conflict within the private sense and conflict within a public sense yes, yes so yes, within yes. the context of the private sense you talk about even the family uh amorous conflict conflict between lovers and all that uh community conflicts national conflicts you see what i'm talking about so it is conflict I started by saying that conflict has to do with a disruption in harmony. You know, once we are supposed to be at peace with ourselves, we are supposed to be in harmony, both with our minds and our hearts and everything. But then it extends to uh, a person outside of ourselves and then it extends to communities and then all of it. That is where, for instance, you are talking about the identity conflict. What brings about identity conflict? It's got to be with someone saying, you don't belong here, you know? And you are saying, I belong here. And you, even though it's a sad thing that one has to prove one's identity, you know, identity has to do with personhood. Your very, your very, your very being is the identity. And if you, I, no one, you didn't ask to be in Liberia, you didn't ask to be Grable, you didn't ask to be, you see, yeah, but it happened. There is a prenatal kind of uh, configuration that you and I don't know anything about. You know, whatever happened yeah. for my father and my mother to come together, or my this person to be my sibling, I had no, no say whatsoever in it, and yet it exists. So those conflicts continue to exist within the context of the intra- uh, uh, context and what in the uh, interpersonal context, which is then um, metastasized to other things as we see them. So it's uh, it's that's that's the reality. It is a, a disruption. It is a dissonance. It is a discordance that we have to deal with. You know, Prof. It, uh, it reminds me of uh, Ella Wheeler Wilcox's poem. 
nothing is ever settled until it is settled right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and and who determines the right settlement probably is from a personal view but of course then it meet, it confronts challenges and all that sad thing so so um so what what i what i thought we would do yeah is look at to look at the conflict within mm -hmm. and then move on to the conflict without yeah so and by how I want to frame it is to say that we're looking at two separate trajectories mm -hmm. using colonialism mm -hmm. as the frame to look at Francophone and Anglophone mm -hmm. and see the, the, the conflict within the colonized mm -hmm. and move from there to civil conflict mm -hmm. so can we go on that journey mm -hmm. or um, what do you think okay i mean because okay. we we are taking a more global uh, type of uh, consideration or international type of consideration or uh, as you were talking about uh, colonialism you know the colonizer and the colonized yes yes but but looking at it now with just forms yeah, yeah, yes, yes, of course. Yeah, of course, yeah. that's the foundation. Uh, we, uh, we, yes, um, you know, the first thing we again we are talking about uh, moving from within and then going out. Uh, yes, what the colonizer does first is to break you up. Yes, so so let's to destroy your personhood that you so are not. Let Anthony, let Anthony show the first the first slide. Mm -hmm. If he can, so the first slide is is again we've used this slide before. This mm -hmm. is the slide that um before uh the first one was before the the, the colonizer scheme, and then we have the second one which is the Berlin Conference, right? How they uh -huh. carve up yeah. Africa. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the third slide, if we look at the third slide, the third slide it um uh, okay. So the colonial, uh, you're going too fast, Anthony. Can you go back one? Okay, so the colonial masters or the colonializers, let's not call them masters, right? Mm -hmm. For France, it was assimilation, right? Mm -hmm. To create the France in Africa, integrate, you, you must be the which, perfect Which French. was a gymnastic uh, fraudulence. Yeah. It was a gymnastic yeah. fraudulence <laughs> to say assimilation. You know, yeah. assimilation, who, who will benefit? They will benefit. Yeah, Is it what and, then, about? and then the second one was was um, 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 indirect rule, right? Mm. The next mm. slide, please. And that was that was the um, the, the British. Yes. So the British, yeah, right. They they manage African leaders with the advice and control of British officials. Yes, and somehow that comes through because you see a richness of culture mm -hmm. in 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 the countries that that were ruled by the British because they were not being assimilated mm -hmm. their culture remained you know mm -hmm. it's true that they had this overseer who who got his directions from the queen or mm -hmm. the king but their their, their um their culture remained so mm -hmm. what we're doing now is looking at the next slide which is um singor saying mm -hmm. i have i have always ha have the feeling that mm -hmm. i was on a quest to reconquer something my name my country or myself that is why my approach has in essence always been poetic mm -hmm. because it seems to me that in a way that is what poetry is the reconquest of the self by the self words are the essential element mm -hmm. right and then you you yourself said that is the spontaneous overflow of feelings it takes its origin mm -hmm. yeah, from the ocean, yeah, yeah. yeah, recollected in tranquility. Mm -hmm. So now we come to these poems that we're looking at and mm -hmm. we're gradually moved towards Liberian poetry, but mm -hmm. now we're looking at this conflict that is happening between, within the colonized. And yeah. the first one is Amy Cizier, well, it's written by Leon Damas, right? Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and he was, as we know, one of the founders of necritude but mm -hmm. this, this is a french they were being assimilated as french mm -hmm. people yeah. mm -hmm. and so he says i feel ridiculous in their mm -hmm. shoes in their mm -hmm. tuxedo mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. in the dress shirt. I feel mm -hmm. ridiculous with my toes that were not made to sweat from morning to evenings on dressing. I mm -hmm. feel ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And and, the, and and not not that one. Just just wait, Anthony. So so so, so what's happening now is the the, the the portrait that's coming out is is attacking the, mm -hmm. this mode of mm -hmm. colonialism mm -hmm. you know he's saying look it's not me mm -hmm. he's, it's not me and, and and so i feel ridiculous in these things right in fact yeah that's that that poem is uh is reminiscence of uh of uh Kona Castle's poem, which is Our Man on Broad Street. Yes. Yeah, Our yes. Man on Broad Street. Yes, yeah. You know, this is a guy who is in a tropical area with the heat and everything, but he yes. wants to demonstrate that he's been to. He's, yes. he's been to the West, he's uh, been abroad, and he's uh, Westernly sophisticated, and therefore he could have gone in an open neck uh, shirt to, to go wherever he wanted to go. There would be a gown you know, a waist length gown that he would have worn, it would have been something, but uh, he uh, he decided to to go in a suit. And the discomfort, yes, yes. The discomfort is what uh, Kona uh, emphasizes, uh, his, of course, his, uh, the speaker in the poem emphasizes as a way of ridiculing this guy who is in a, uh, a, a suit, a Western yes, yes. suit. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that. Yeah. Sorry, there's a there's a back. But I was going to say that our men on Broad Street. Um, you uh, uh, you can Google and listen to Kona Kashu read read the poem. So oh, so. Is that, uh, uh, oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, so so good. yeah. So 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 this this Western, mm -hmm. uh, 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 um, I would not say entrapment. This Western adornments. Yes. Uh, what they attacking that mm -hmm. look this is we, we've i feel ridiculous in this yes. thing is what what mm -hmm. i'm saying you yes. know so then we come to the identity crisis like yes that's right mm -hmm. this is not me mm -hmm. yeah so 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 the second poem is now one um by gabriel okara who is uh, uh from uh, ghana ghana mm -hmm. nigeria i think nigeria yeah yeah nigeria. Goes, yeah, yeah goes. yeah and he says once upon a time son they used to laugh with their hearts and laugh with their eyes, but now they only laugh with their teeth while their eyes, black, cold eyes, search behind my shadow. Mm -hmm. There was a time, indeed, they used to shake hands with their hearts, but that's gone, son. Now they shake hands without hearts mm -hmm. while they left and search my empty pockets. But mm -hmm. it's, it's a very long poem, but then at the yeah. end, he says, but believe me, son, I want to be what I used to be when I was like you. I want to unlearn all these muting things most of all, I want to relearn how to laugh mm -hmm. for my laugh in the mirror, mm -hmm. you know. And 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 you can see this longing, um, this longing for it's, for something that was missing. Yes. You know, this identity crisis that's in 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 um in every colonized person, you know, the one that uh, um I think Du Bois called it double consciousness, mm, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so, that's uh, you know, right there. That is the pain of nostalgia. Yes, that is the pain of nostalgia, uh, cultural nostalgia. That that is long gone, and unfortunately, it might come upon that we we cannot so easily. You know, it's it's like uh, uh, oil that is spilled from a bottle. Uh, when you spill oil from a bottle. The oil does not uh, totally leave the bottle. Uh, yes. So yes. that is that is the thing about it. Uh, there has been much spillage of our culture. Our culture has hemorrhaged a whole lot, and still there are traces, and those traces are not enough for us to be very confident in our uh, grabs of our cultural heritage. And again, that becomes very painful and which is part of uh, part of uh, what we are talking about today, which is the conflict, uh, you know, the 
the question at some point will then be what do we do and probably part of what we do is what we are into as looking at some of these things uh yeah, but we can, yeah go ahead no i was going to say but we can look at some of the other poems yeah. and then um uh, and, and then the, yeah yeah, yeah. so we, we, we'll, we'll go to the next poem mm -hmm. um yeah the next poem is this is this is again leon damas and mm -hmm. he says there are some things of which i was not able i was able not to lose all memory uh -huh. and bullying in bamboo for every falling mango during the in indigestion of every bite of the history of friends mm -hmm. and flutes read flute playing slaves airs on the moon so he's saying that he cannot forget right mm -hmm. he says right. that mm -hmm. that yeah these are things that no matter how you bullet me these are things yeah. i can't forget yeah yeah, yeah. And the, next, the next poem is um an, another one this is this is uh uh leon damas again i call him the bad yeah. boy of negritude you know <laughs> i love this poem it says give back my black dolls Mm -hmm. so i can play with them the naive games that comes naturally lost in the shadows of my laws my heart recover my daring i become myself again muted myself from what i was yesterday mm -hmm. yesterday quite simply yesterday mm -hmm. when the time of uprooting came mm -hmm. will they never know this resentment in my heart the eye of distrust open too late they made off with the space that was mine mm -hmm. the clothes the days the life and he mm -hmm. goes on and on yeah. and on and then at the end he says give me back my black dolls yeah you know and then we have david diop who is saying to those who have taken over the western culture he says we pity you your country's burning sun is nothing but a shadow on your serene civilized brow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the thought of your grandmother's hut mm -hmm. bring blushes to your face that is mm -hmm. bleached by mm -hmm. years of humiliation and mm -hmm. bad conscience. Mm -hmm. And while you trample on the bitter red soil of Africa, let the words of anguish mm -hmm. keep time with your restless step. Mm -hmm. Oh, I am lonely, so lonely here. The renegade, the renegade, the renegade. Yes, yes that's yes. <laughs> I feel that they I, I feel that I feel that they they um the 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 francophone uh poets their loss was greater <laughs> they felt this thing what do you think uh, prof the, you know you, you remind me it may be a, a a slight uh topic but when I was a refugee in Ghana <laughs> the Ghanaians said that we were, we were not refugees we were friends of ghana and <laughs> they, they, yeah the underlying point was that uh they the the kind of uh amenities that would be coming forth if they had agreed that we were we were uh refugees they won't if they say we were friends of ghana and not refugees they some of them try to say oh well we're trying to be euphemistic and whatever i said but this is nothing euphemistic about it you know yeah. if you assimilate then definitely things that are peculiar to your identity will not be emphasized and that is the thing you will see in the french concept of assimilation assimilation a yeah. whole lot from the assimilation hey keep quiet we are the same so don't you don't you raise any dust? That's 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 at the heart of this assimilation type of thing, you know. Yeah. And in the case of the well, I, to to tell you the truth, uh, it's almost like we can't even win on both sides because even the British that said that they wanted to respect our culture and what have you, they also did their own worst. You know, through indirect rule and what have you, uh, there were certain things that unfortunately uh, the colonized could not benefit from. So either way was not a good way. We can talk about the, the, the lesser of two evils, fine, but beyond that, there isn't anything much. Look, my identity is my identity. Your identity is your identity. And anything that gets in the way of that identity should be what? Removed. That is, the, that is at the heart of it all. 
And also, I mean, even 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 the the the, the Portuguese with the assimilados, you yeah. know, it was the same thing, assimilation. You know, they want they wanted assimilation. But but let's look at the other the other poem because there are a lot. I mean, I, as I was going through, I was like, wow, they this this in the, this conflict within is really you know like David Diop. This, this is the one with vultures. Mm -hmm. He says, yeah, we, I think we we did this one already. It's the next no, one we're on. No, I you think. haven't done. Oh no, no. Okay, okay. Let's this, go back one. This thing about vultures. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He says in those day in, in those days when civilization kicked us in the face. Mm -hmm. And then he says, uh, drown the, uh, the, the pattern noster drown the howling on the plantations of promise broken at the point of a gun of mm -hmm. foreigners who did not seem human, who knew all the books but did not know love. Mm -hmm. But we whose hands fertilize the womb of the earth, in spite of the desolate villages of torn Africa, hope was preserved in us as in a fortress and from the mines of Swaziland to the factories of Europe, spring will be reborn under our bright steps. Yeah. So this one is a hopeful poem. Yeah, that's this a hopeful poem, you know. Yes, this um, one is, is hopeful. Yeah. Uh, and then the next one, he says, in your presence, I rediscover my name, my name that was hidden under the pain of separation. I rediscover the eyes no longer veiled with fever and your laughter like a flame piercing the shadows has revealed Africa to me beyond the snow of yesterday. 10 years, my love. So this is like a love poem to Africa was uh, um, yeah. Um, um, writing. Yeah. It's, and then the next one, hold it, on, uh, it, uh, please, before, uh, not now, uh, Anthony. Before okay. we, yeah. we, we get there, you know, again and again, we should not lose sight of the fact the audience, the, the immediate audience of literature. The immediate audience of literature is the heart, is also the mind. Yeah. It is, it, literature um, travels in words, and the words hit or ought to hit the target, which is the immediate human person that is listening, the immediate human person that is looking at the words on. So when Diop is, uh, you know, kind of uh, reminiscing with Africa and what have you, you see an element of hope. And where does hope spring? It springs from the human heart and mind. Yeah. So yeah. it is that which uh, he is targeting, which is the beauty of that poem. So Prof, what happens when you have a colonized person and they are already um they are already conflicted within themselves right and they are searching for this selfhood as you call it yeah. and then all of a sudden you have civil conflict coming so now you have conflict within and without yeah. what happens then it again uh you you remind me of when i was in the heat of the war uh part of where i was thrown was in fendel and for the few months that i spent in fendel there was one thing that kept me going well god first but the idea that every morning to the evening, I got my pen and my copy book and I wrote. It became a, a, a level of hope for me. It became a level of purgation, catharsis. You know, there had to be a way of conversing with myself, drawing in from what was happening in my environment. So the question of what do you do there's got to be something in every human person that sustains that person. Yeah, yeah. If one is hope deficient, then the next thing is to run to suicidal end. You've got to keep hope alive. Anything beyond that, it's 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 it's, it's going to be uh, tragic. And that's the point I I I want to make in that. 
So then, within the context of having hope, you also have to be able to identify those people who can form a team, a team, a coterie, or a kind of collaborative mind to be able to sustain the hope. If it is not there, definitely, probably your very own hope may begin to uh, flicker and you don't want it to flicker. So you've got to sustain hope and you've got to, you know, quietly find like minds to be able to help you sustain that hope. If that flame is gone, you are gone. You become hope deficient. Okay, sorry, sorry, guys. Don't worry about that. That's part of poetry. That's part of what? That's part of literature. You know. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so we we talk about. Um, so, if you're in the war or you're in conflict, and and so Inka says that. Writers are not divorced from their environment, right? Not at all. Is it is it possible? And this is just a question: Is it possible that a writer or poet, in the midst of conflict, could write a love poem that is not about conflict? Then, of course, <laughs> we in within the context of creativity, we can have fleeting moments. We all can have plenty moments. Oh, I wish I had this, I had this, I had this. Oh, I wish I had that, I had that. That sort of a thing. So uh, when you are in the midst of conflict, your mind takes flight with the energy of sustaining you. Your mind takes flight with the, the energy to sustain you. Why? Because if your mind rested with you and you were in the dull drums of agony and what have you, you would destroy yourself. So then at that moment, the mind takes flight. The mind is thinking about a lady that you, you, you want to fantasize with or a man you want to fantasize with or a place or a moment you want to fantasize with. There is, um, I forgot the, um, the uh, title of the uh, movie, but Actually, it's it's part of the it's part of the the cycle of uh, movies related to uh, the Korean War. Okay, and and here is this these guys are locked up and they don't know whether they are going to live or die. And for a good part of the day, they are reminiscing. Each is supposed to reminisce about the best dish he ever had. And this person is supposed to describe the, the meal. And within that context, they found out that all of a sudden they forgot that they were in what? In war, what have you? So that com there comes a moment in time when the mind becomes an ally by kind of reaching out for things that you really had fun of, and that's what we're talking about, nostalgia. That's part of the healing process, if, if you may. So, so um, like the, the poet Sukina said that, you know, writing writing poetry about pain, you first acknowledge the pain, mm -hmm. right? And then you, 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 you put pen to paper, you weep on paper, right? It's almost like you, you inhale when you're writing, mm -hmm. And then when you share it with people, you exhale, and then others will say, "Oh, I I I feel the same way. Or I didn't know that somebody else felt this way. You know, so that way it is it, shared. So so when you put pen to paper, and you weep on paper, right? And you you start to you want to paint this picture of your pain, right? Because remember, we, we talk about the, pre the brevity of poet, poetry. Mm -hmm. And what you can explain in 3,000 words in an mm -hmm. essay, in poetry, you're going to, to, to use very uh, the minimum yeah, amount of words. words. Yeah, yeah. Words. So you have to be able to explain this pain that you have. Mm -hmm. you know? So for me, I, you, you know that my, 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 my poems are, are so personal to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That, that I that I That's don't. What you think. 
Yeah, that, that I don't I, like to. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, yeah, you're right. And other people might feel the same yeah. way, but I, I keep saying, well, I wrote it. I don't want people to read it because, I mean, there are some poems I can read, you know, but, but the ones that bring painful memories to me, mm -hmm. I do not like to share, you know? Mm -hmm. So my, my question is, what happens if, if, it's, it's a th if poetry is therapeutic, if poetry makes you release mm -hmm. the pain or the grief? So if, if, if somebody writes a poem and does not want to release it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, or share the grief or whatever, what do you think that, what, what happens to that poem? Well, for me, again, this is this is this is K. Moses Nabwe speaking. For me, yes. uh, the only the only thought that enjoys privacy is the thought that is never expressed. You get the point. The yes. only thought that enjoys privacy is the thought that is never expressed. Once okay. you've expressed it you've opened it up either to one person or 204 individuals. So it depends on you. What do you want to do? My crying, why do I cry? Probably I cry because I have to release energy, but I cry because I need other positive help or something of that sort. So. Crying poetry is a form, it gets to be a form of crying, or it gets to a point of being a celebration, a celebration of a feeling. So to, to take that is like talking about a light. You cannot take light and put it, as Bible says, to put it under a bushel. <laughs> you cannot yes, cover yes. it. If you cover it, then it means that you are doing disservice to humanity. You want to be able to share something, and in that uh, uh, in in that process, uh, bring about a commonality of feelings, a commonality of humanity. These things cannot happen if you take if you wrote a poem and and and, and say it's for me. I'm hiding it. What the heck? Why did you decide to what to 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 write it? Why did you decide to put a pen to paper? You would say, well, that is what that is individual choice. That's a bogus choice. Yeah, and you, and you know, Prof, it's like sometimes when you read a poem, like like I I wander lonely as a cloud, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or John Pepper Clark, uh, the casualties, you know? Uh -huh. It could mean different things, you know. Uh, um uh it's it's like like David Diop's love song to Africa, you know. When you're reading the poem, like um uh, or totem, you know, mm -hmm. or, or or black woman sing or some of the poems you read there, you like, uh, is he talking about Africa? Is he talking yeah. about a woman? Mm -hmm. You know. So sometimes, sometimes they personify Africa, mm -hmm. you know, and and then uh, uh 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 um when they when and then you say but but. Is Africa a woman? Is it a mother? Is it uh, what are they talking about? You know, so I think personification is important. Sometimes even the pain is personified. But I always feel that if I if I when I write a poem, you know, and I, I send it to somebody and I say, what do you think? They always come back to me with a different interpretation than what I you know, and I'm like, that's not what I meant. But even when I exhale, which is I send the poem out. If they experience grief or pain differently, they read the poem differently. They don't read the poem the same way, you know, and, which is which is interesting. And 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 that brings in the concept of reading a poem. Okay. That brings in the concept. You see, basically, a poem is read on two levels. The first level is the level on which you and I need to agree. Yes. Because it is the, the set of words on the paper. I cannot be talking about a cat and you be talking about a raccoon. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> I cannot be talking about I cannot be talking about a, a, a salmon and you'll be talking about a shark because that's not on the paper. So the first okay. level, the primary level of understanding must be there. Otherwise, okay. nothing exists. Otherwise, I am illiterate and probably you too. So the best thing is at the primary level, we must agree what is on the paper. The second level, the secondary level is the level of personal experience. This is where this is where interpretation comes in. That is that is why every time when I'm 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 teaching poetry, I tell students, I said, do not allow anyone to tell you that uh, poetry can be read any kind of way. No. Poetry is an art form. Poetry is a skill. The thing about it is, at the primary level, we all must agree. At the secondary and the tertiary level, we bring in our. That's where the uh, the reader response comes into the picture. The reader response comes to the. So when it comes to the the secondary as well as the tertiary, then I can see something different from what you are saying, and you can see something different from what I'm saying. But if I'm talking about a journey from, from Moravia to Kakata, it's a journey from Moravia to Kakata. Yeah, Someone yeah. sees something about death. Having experienced the war, this person all of a sudden is not just looking at what the, the, the trip from, from Moravia to Kakata. That person is seeing the, the the agony he or she may have experienced. So that is that is I'm glad you brought that particular thing up. So how do yeah, we yeah. how do we understand how do we go about poetry we see multiple levels but that, the multiple levels must begin with the first level on which the writer and the reader must agree yeah thanks bro. yeah can we have some some uh, are there some comments that we could we could see if people are listening um oh yeah watching from boston <laughs> Guru Imara Jackson. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi. Uh, what's up with you? Where is Fred Dennis? Uh, thanks. Deeply say thanks. thanks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. Anastasia says trying to find oneself grasping for the remnants of what used to be. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. And Frank Fellow is watching from <laughs> Frank Frank. Oh, thanks, James. James says this is his favorite program <laughs> of this platform. Boy. Thank you, James. You might have wisdom. In terms of strife. The truth told, seldom do we recognize our dependency on each other. In times of strife and human conflict, the truth be told, we settle for peace and harmony. Our existence in universe is inseparable and grounded in the truth to be told we need each to survive. Never a doubt moment to say I'm sorry for an offense in any dispute. The truth be told, no man is an island or infallible listening to you. I wrote this short but That is so nice. Imagine, imagine. Oh, he wrote, oh, okay. He said I wrote this short. Okay. Because I was going to say <laughs> Yeah. Someone said poetry is personal, poetry but, is personal but it can be interpreted, interpreted in different ways. Differently, no one will really know and can only resonate or relate it to their personal philosophy. Yeah, that's what Prof Nangwe said. Yeah, right. Yeah. You're right, Lovet. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So so yeah, I mean, as we as we go through, we see that I mean, I I, I framed it with the with the with with the colonized um framework because yeah. I it it, it 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 astounds me that for the French. They are so vehemently anti, you know, the this assimilation is seemed, I would say didn't work, but then again, you meet French people and, and you meet Francophone people and they say, Oh, I'm French, you know, so you can't really do, but 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 I would like to um now uh uh talk about hope. <laughs> We've talked a lot about 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 um things. So hope, yeah, it's my favorite poem, deeply mm. terrible what hold the moon and i'll tell you a little bit about this poem i i mean it's on gplay's page i would urge everybody to read this poem so what happened was during the election after the election i was so down i don't mean the biden election i mean the other election <laughs> and i couldn't stop crying you know and 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 i uh, uh um gplay had written this poem and i read the poem 
Behold the moon and it's a hopeful poem. Whatever you're going through, just hold the moon. Hold hope. I call the moon as, as hope. I, I hope that one day Ghibli comes on to explain this poem to us. But talking about hope, if Ghibli would allow me, there's one place there. He says the rice field will grow anew. And when the moon comes, we shall still gather in the town square and troop to the festive war dance lit by the hot palms of drummers. I love that. You know, I mean, I read this poem almost, I would say every week, you know, and I, I then I will write Ghibli and say, I love this poem. It's on his page, hold the moon. Please read this poem. It is a beautiful poem of hope. At least for me, it's yeah. about hope, you know? Yeah, and then there's a, yeah. Prof, do you want to say something hey, before we get yeah, to the next the thing about, um, that is the, um, the distributive quality of literature, the distributive quality of poetry. The idea that we go in there with one thought, but we leave with multiple thoughts. Yeah. We yeah. go in there with one emotion, but by the time we leave from there, it may be a phrase, it may be a word, it may be an allusion. In other words, an historical reference or something of that sort. It may be that, that almost immediately sparks something that we run with. So the more your, your, your work has a strong distributive property, the better it becomes for so many people. And in that process, over time, your work becomes a classic because it goes from one generation to the other and in other words, it bridges what generations. Yeah, it's like it's like uh 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 uh. I told a poem Ghana where the bees speak. Right, she talks about the bees. It gave me a bead that wrap in joy. Find me a bee to carry my grief. We sing of bees and sing with bees. Just see how well they show on us. Don't tell me if there were no bees, something else could meet our needs. Something what? Something where? Please keep it there, even if it's rare. And she, it's about beads. And that's what we're saying that, you, you know, uh, we, we were saying that, um, uh, 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 that you know, you, you can find inspiration in almost everything, you know? It can be, I don't know, you know, it could be a tree, a bird, you know, and Ama Atos uh, is a bead, right? But she said the bead wraps grief and the beads wrap joy, right? And we, of course, we, we, we listed some, some here. Um, Patricia Jabber Wesley, one of the civil conflict poems she has is What Took Us to War mm -hmm. and Becoming Ghost, you know, and then Hope she has when the wanderers come home. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have our own uh, Dr. K. Moses Navi, no. <laughs> who has uh, written a lot, mm -hmm. you know, about it. But, but, um, thank you, Anthony. But, we, but the, the thing is that. Um, you know, like like one of uh, the poems that I like from Patricia Jabber Wesley is Some Are Made of Steel, mm -hmm. you know? But she talks about the swamp, right? The swamp behind her, the house. Yeah. And then the, it ends with uh, uh, sometimes the swamp, sometimes the rock. I think it's, I think she says rock. But it's just that uh, hope, hope in a poem can be, like you said, very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. You know, it can release grief. It can... It can also um, harmonize the disharmonized. Yes, <laughs> harmonize. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, harmonize the disharmonized. Yeah, you're yeah. right, Prof. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so um, if we look at poems, let's say like Liberian poems, and we mm -hmm. talk about um, the poems that before, like during the age of discovery mm -hmm. and adventure, right? There were so many poems of hope, like we talk about the libretto by Melvin Tolson, talking uh -huh. about Liberia. This, this, uh, uh, this, this, this tree that's budding is coming mm -hmm. up. We talk about uh, uh, Barclay, right? Of human greatness, mm -hmm. Prof. <laughs> your poem of human <laughs> greatness, and then we talk about the fact that uh, the national anthem itself is mm -hmm. a poem. Uh, 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 the Lone Star Forever itself yeah, it's a, is a poem. It's a lyric poem because we it's have you have the uh, dichotomy here. We have lyric poems and you have uh, you know you have narrative poems. Narrative poems, yeah. Yes, yeah. you know, and, and 
sounds belong to. <laughs> Go ahead. And, and you know, that's a funny because I I read an article and and the, the things the same thing we're discussing. People were like, no, a song is not a poem. And then this <laughs> other said, no, it's a poem. You yes. know, so I guess. If you look at, uh, at, 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 at at the lyrics of a song, they have repetition, yeah, personification, mm -hmm. metaphor, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. you know, so all those so things. What is mm -hmm. it that? It's yeah. poetry. No, the, the thing about it is, it is yes, the thing about it is that you know that is why in concepts like poetry and all that, somebody must take some time to to understand the craft. You know, yes. it's not yes. you just bounce up and you write something and oh somebody says, Yeah, 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 it's right. You you have to take some time out to be able to read a little more into uh the dynamics of poetry. If you do that, you will know first, as I was saying earlier, that uh the broad division you have lyric poems. That's yes. the lyric poems are poems that, that express strong feeling. That's where you find sonnets and all those regular songs, anthems, all those things, odes, that's where you find them. That's lyric. The, the, the other is the narrative poetry where you have epic and uh, idyls and all that. They tell story, even though once in a while you have an aspect of a storytelling in the lyric poem, the, the, the fact of the matter is that the strong feeling aspect of that poem, that, that is the thing that makes it a lyric poem. So a song is actually a, a poem. Yeah, Tupac, Tupac, <laughs> Tupac, Tupac <laughs> keep your head up, that's a poem. Yeah. But, but, but what, what about, what about uh, our own man, uh, what is it, uh, oh, Robert uh, Nesta Mali? You know, those songs oh, yeah. that whip up and the West was actually in arms. The West was shaking. The, the behinds of Western powers were shaking until they didn't rest until they put the, the poor guy to death. Those were the songs. War yeah. in the East, war in the West. <laughs> Everywhere is war, war, war. <laughs> you know? yeah. Even after we'll talk about that song, yes. Get up, stand up, stand up for your right. And also, it's almost it's almost historical because when I'm when I'm listening to that song, um, it says until the ignoble and unhappy yes. regime that holds our brothers in South yes. Africa, Namibia, yes. in subhuman bondage, yes. you know, and I'm like, okay, okay, South Africa is free now, and yes. you know, have you been know, toppled, but until still, it destroyed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, the thing about it is that if conflict. Sadly enough, uh, conflicts will never end in our world. We may manage them, but they will never end. So if you took out South Africa, you took about took out Namibia, you will put other what countries in there, you will put other communities, you will put yes, other yes. races in there. How in the world that after 200 and some, some odd years in America, we will be talking about what? We will be talking about people trying to cheat in elections. We'll be talking about people trying to 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 uh, disenfranchise uh, the brown and black race in this place, which is supposed to be the pantheon of what of democracy. How in the world? So these things will never end. It's just that we'll try to manage them and see how best. But we should be we should always be talking about these things. That's the thing that we have. Yeah, and 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 like we said, you know. Um, even if you, you talk about dirges and things, those are those are lyrical or, yes. or narrative poetry because they, they 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 carry a story. Yes, you know. Well, yeah, they are so, dirges. Uh, yes. Hmm? No, 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 no. So I was I was going to say. So we had we had talked about uh, a poetry writing last week, hmm. and we we say that there are a lot of young people who do the spoken word in Liberia, and that uh, we were going to invite you know some some spoken word artists because actually the griots have come full circle mm -hmm. with the spoken word mm -hmm. so if you have a young poet in liberia right now and that person wanted to maybe write a story about well a poem actually about conflict what would be your advice to them 
right about conflict. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, what's yeah, the, okay, so that's so okay. I will say, well, the, the thing about it is that someone who is interested in literature must be interested in words. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Must be interested in sentences. <laughs> you see, I have uh, this thing I call a uh, full cycle of the, 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 the writing experience. I talk about your understanding of words, your understanding of sentences, your understanding of paragraphs. Of course, within the context of poetry, we talk about lines and we talk about stanzas. So short of the long is that if you decide to write, you know, sometimes I don't make, there are people, people write uh, poems on, on uh, Facebook and some might expect comments and what have you. I don't, I don't, I'm frugal with my comments because I don't want to put anyone under the impression that what is in the yeah there may be kernels of there may be kernels of uh, substance, but if this person uh, cannot work on subject verb agreement, cannot work on the forms of words and what have you, then you know I I do not want to put that person on well when that is not happening. So in the context of young people that are writing, please let them align themselves with someone who has experience let them have the capacity to humble themselves and be able to interact with other people so that they can improve the skill you know to to write with the notion that you can write and you cannot write then it becomes a problem you know so uh, yeah. that's it yeah. mm -hmm. go ahead no, as I was saying, um, and also, also, oh, before I, 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 I say uh, what I'm about to say, uh, Emmanuel Jackson was asking if things fall apart is poetic literature. No, it's prose. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's it, not it, it, it may be a composite by virtue of every now and then you, you see poetic splashes. Seeing poetic splashes doesn't really make the thing a prose. I mean, doesn't make it a, a poem. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but Emmanuel, your poem that you that you that you that you wrote when we were talking, that's a poem. Yeah, well, that's a yeah. poem. <laughs> Repetitions and cadence and everything. Yes, that's yeah. that's 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 the thing about it. <laughs> yeah, and no, I was I was going to say that um, usually when 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 uh, when you when before writing, you know, everybody say, oh, I, I, yes, you can be a writer, but it's a good idea. You know how I don't know if people are listening who were doing freshman english in liberia remember mm -hmm. when we said um we said uh um uh, how do you how do you become good by mixing with the good so mm -hmm. so if you read if you read uh uh chaucer and you read emily dickinson mm -hmm. was you mm -hmm. know to roll like mm -hmm. that you know and you become, you become uh, a, a, a accustomed to real yeah. real you know reading <laughs> then you begin to write but you of course you can write you don't you know, you, because you need you need to have a, a, a rich background if, before you can. Yeah, if you don't have, you have to have, if you are interested in the writing culture, you have to take delight in a reading culture. You've yeah. got to have a strong right. reading culture, especially when you are at the, uh, at the elementary level, well, elementary, not in the sense of first grade or second grade, when you are at the entry level of writing, you know, yeah, you yeah. you you have to, because in order to dance well, you must watch people who have danced. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, you can formulate your own style <laughs> after after seeing or listening to the masters. Yeah. E. E. Cummings, E. E. Cummings, who write in a lot of low case letters and what have you, he didn't get into that just on fiat. This guy somehow, whether it was formal or informal, he went through some training in order to get to the level of saying, this is my style. William Faulkner, William Faulkner will pick, pick up a sentence and that sentence will go almost two pages. One sentence with our, with our, with our punctuation marks and whatever. He didn't get that by fiat. The initial thing is that you've got to learn the tools of the trade. You've got to learn the tricks of the trade before you, you come into your own corner. If you cannot do that, then you have a problem. So short of the long is that 
an individual who is interested in writing, that's a very beautiful thing. But that person must be able to develop a strong reading culture. You see, there is something that comes to you if you if you see how words are what, how words are formed, how sentences are created, how punctuation marks are used. All those things are part and parcel of what you need to do so that when you see one, you say, ah, there's a problem that is here. Does this mean that uh, even the masters will not uh, sleep and whatever? It's possible. But when they sleep, they know they've slept. It is not like uh, someone else who, if if you sleep, you don't know that you sleep and you think that's a beautiful thing. So two things. And the first is developing a strong reading culture. So that even when it comes to even so that even when it comes to what you call this, uh, what, what what you all call it, the spoken what? Spoken word. <laughs> spoken word. Spoken word is a sophisticated form of say uh uh what? Uh poetry by, by road metal. In other words, poetry recited. That's what that's what spoken word is. Before you can speak the word, if you are in a literary society, you must have written it or you must think about how it is written before you get it out there. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Prof. And thank you all our viewers. Thank you for joining us um, today. I think we had a very productive discussion. Prof and I, we are always eager to come back yeah. and discuss literature with you, poetry, the art of writing and things like that. We ask you to join us next week. Um, we will put the flyer up on Tuesday to let you know the topic. Yeah. We might have a guest. We were waiting. Yeah. And we we, we urge you to go to, 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 to G Place page and read Hold the Moon yeah. so it can take you through this pandemic. Be safe. Have a restful weekend. And we'll see you next Friday. Thank you. Thanks, Prof. All right. <laughs> see you all. Yeah, <laughs>